now talking about misinformation. Let's just let's just pull up another screen here. I, I have all my notes in the backdrop. Um, well, we're debating the we're debating the public, uh, not the, the universal health, universal income. Uh, let's pull that up here. Debating universal in universal basic income UBI, and then this is the, uh, the 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 bill supported. Whereas every person should have access to a livable basic income, the minister must develop a national framework for the implementation of guaranteed livable basic income program throughout Canada. And then listen listen to the terms of this. This is obviously the pro uh, petition in support of. So it'll give you the it'll give you. Uh, their guidelines or their 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 baseline of what it will do and they think these are good things and then the question is going to be obviously if this passes is this good or is this just how hyperinflation occurs again i'm not an economist i i know what i think i understand but i understand what i don't even know on december 16 2021 members of parliament league exam introduced bill c223 uh, which, if passed, would establish the first national framework for a guaranteed livable basic income for all persons over 17 across Canada. Listen to this. Key features. Any person over 17, including temporary workers, permanent, uh, permanent residents, and refugee claimants. Create national standards for health and social supports, which I thought we already had with universal health care, uh, co uh, that complement a guaranteed basic income program. Determine what constitutes a livable basic income for each region of Canada to ensure that participation in education, training, or the labor force is not required. To ensure that participation in education, training, or the labor force market is not required. I'm not sure I understand what that means. Does not result in a decrease in services or benefits meant to meet an individual's exceptional needs related to health or disability. What would it do? It would require the Minister of Finance within one year to create a Canada-wide framework for the implementation of a guaranteed livable basic, basic income. Simply put, this means that the federal government would need to put together the standards and plan from which it, along with other levels of government, could create basic incomes in their jurisdiction. They're debating this right now. And, um, you know, th there's, there's, let me bring up my window here. There are some serious questions as to what the implication of this would be. Different provinces, different basic income for everyone over 17, refugees. Uh, I mean, it's um, we already have universal health care and we're seeing the problems that exist within the universal health care system. Uh, hospitals on backlog, an infrastructure so weak that when a pandemic comes, uh, you know, the, the, the universal healthcare system is so overrun already, they need to start locking people in their homes. And I, and I know I'm seeing in the chat and I know uh, what people are thinking when they hear this. I mean, I know what they're thinking. It rhymes with schmiset and, um, and schmommunism. <laughs> okay. That's from uh, knocked up. That's the old joke from uh, knocked up, but it, it is, you know, I had someone try to explain the difference, but you know that, that universal basic income is different than unemployment insurance or employment insurance. I don't see how. the The argument was that it's meant to increase with the cost of living. Universal basic income, as opposed to just a job for everyone who can work, and those who can't work have their basic needs met. So that's that's the question. Have you heard of cacistocracy, ruled by the worst among us? I have not heard of that. Taxing the hell out of the middle class. So I mean that's 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 um, that's what's going on in Canada on that yeah well, and that's this is the other part that people are talking about. Ron Paul has his thoughts about what universal basic income leads to. The only issue, be, okay, th where does that come from? These are my questions. I don't have the answers. Where does that money come from? Because it comes from one of two places: uh, taxes or printing cash. The state gets that money from citizens, or it creates that money out of thin air. Uh, there's only so much you can tax people before they leave. In which case, where do you get it from there? Tax people more um, or print it up. And if the government prints money any more than they've been printing it now, that's how you get uh, serious inflation problems. 
You are super cute and smart, but as a resident of downtown Ottawa, I have to disagree with some of your points. Why is my freedom less important than some of the protesters? Mirka Dursen, I don't think it is. I don't think anybody, th this is an issue where freedoms are colliding. There are arguments, by the way, that I, I'm not sure that I buy, I'm not sure that I buy fully into them, but that when you live in a capital city, which has certain benefits of being a capital city of a nation, you know, clean, in theory, Ottawa was not always that clean, good police, good services, it's a government town. When you live in the capital, you're going to have to uh, periodically experience some of the inconveniences that, uh, that go along with living in the capital, and that is protesting the government who's stationed there. Now, as for why your, your freedoms should be less important, no one's saying that whatsoever. There is an issue as to when people protest, uh, there's inconveniences that are caused. You know, the question is, the, the noise was a big problem. The protesters, agree, the convoy agreed to stop honking their horns even before the injunction. But, but after that, I mean, the question would be what freedoms were, what freedoms did you not have uh, as a result of the convoy versus, you know, what freedoms the government itself has just been systematically taken away from Canadians over the last two years?